Hey yo, hobbyists, I'm back with another video and another distro. I'm ashamed. I said I'd stick it out with Kubuntu until LTS, but there is some issues with Kubuntu that kind of forced my hand. Kubuntu 24.4 is still a couple months away, but my experience with it has been not great. But before all that, let me tell you about what's going on here. The topic at hand is Kubuntu, or why Kubuntu dumped out on me, or maybe why I dumped Kubuntu? but also why Ubuntu Studio is rad. But I think this game is pretty rad too. I've been following it for a while. It's called Get to the Orange Door, and honestly, I don't really know a whole lot about it despite following it. The developer seems like a pretty eccentric dude because every time I play it, it's like almost totally different. The core of the game seems to remain the same though. It's this cool first person roguelike with a cool, I don't know, cell, sh cell aesthetic? I'm not sure what this is. There's a name for it. It honestly plays and feels an awful lot like Risk of Rain in a weird way. There's a, there's like no heroes. When you start the game, you start in like a hub that you come back to and you can use shards to upgrade your person and get stuff. It is pretty cool and it has a cool soundtrack too. But that's enough about the game. What even happened with Kubuntu? Well, after about a week of using it, like a week after installing, I started seeing really weird deal breaking issues. It seemed like whenever I changed my audio settings, and I do that quite a lot, Kwin would just crash. It happened to me on X and Waylon, and whenever Kwin on Waylon crashes, it logs you out, so I kept losing my work. And there was one time Kwin crashed on me eight times in one day. Screen sharing was super buggy, like if I tried to tune into somebody's screen share, like on Discord, it would mute my mic. Oh, that took me forever to figure out. And I did that gnarly hike stream from Kubuntu, and I actually had to mute the game audio because it was so garbled. I have no idea. I had a bunch of performance issues too, like my AMD iGPU basically wasn't even usable. The performance was so bad. And in the Kubuntu video, I talked about the various shims and things I had to do for games and whatnot. I don't remember the exact details two years ago when I implemented these workarounds on Debian, but I don't remember them being so painful. Ubuntu has a lot of flavors, and I think most people associate a community version of a distro like uh, Kubuntu or Lubuntu with a particular desktop environment. So there's an Ubuntu flavor called Ubuntu Studio that uses KDE, but it's purpose-built for creatives and creators. And what's absolutely wild is that this Ubuntu flavor, Ubuntu Studio, has its own theme. Yep, Ubuntu Studio has its own theme, which is basically a Materia theme with a slightly customized icon set, but I, it's really good. There's a bar at the top, and it's kind of, it reminds me of elementary, like Pantheon, but without plank on the bottom, and it's really functional. And I also want to say that the branding for Ubuntu Studio is so cool. I could totally see the little Ubuntu Studio stripe with the logo on it on the corner of some laptop or something that's fine-tuned for content creation. But is it actually any good? Like I went from Kubuntu to Ubuntu Studio, which just so happens to have KDE, but is more purpose-built for content creators. So it's gonna be probably a little bit weirder. And holy smokes, yes, it is very good. It has just one major gripe that I'll tell you about in just a sec after I'm done raving about it. But wow, guys, Ubuntu Studio, I mean, it's been flying under the radar for, I don't, I don't know, if you've probably heard of it, but I don't know if I've seen anybody use it. For me and what I do on my workstation, it is absolutely fabulous. It comes pre-installed with every tool I could possibly need to produce an audio or a video. Like, I could go to a production studio, and if it had Ubuntu Studio on it, like if the laptop there did or whatever, I could produce something for someone on the spot. I think that's maybe one reason why Macs are so popular in professional production. The tools and interface is standard, so if you've used a Mac and Mac or Apple tools before, you're already familiar with how everything works. I've been using free and open source tooling for nine years, ten years basically. My holy trinity is Caden Live for video, Audacity for a fork for audio, and GIMP for photo editing and Ubuntu Studio has all of that pre-installed. And it comes with a ton of additional plugins and effects like in Caden Live and Audacity. And there's stuff that GIMP can do that I didn't even know that comes pre-installed and configured. Now, obviously you can do this yourself on your own, you know, Arch install or whatever, but it's all pre-installed out of the box here. 
And for me, that's super valuable because I, I don't have a weekend to sit down and set all of these plugins up and test them and stuff. I'd rather just download a distro and use that one. So let me tell you about the one issue it has. And I think that it's not even an issue with Ubuntu Studio per se, it's a snap issue. So I noticed this on Kubuntu, so it's also happening on Studio, but it hasn't happened in, in a while. It's basically when you install or refresh an installed snap, it resets your sound settings. Now I only found like a couple posts about this, which is odd because in my opinion, I think it's a pretty major issue because I, you know, I run a somewhat complicated hi-fi audio setup. So if installing or resetting an app causes my audio configuration to reset, like that's, that's a problem. So my guess here is that if, if a snap needs to connect to an audio plug, SnapD will reset the whole sound system as some sort of workaround for something because there's no way that this is expected behavior. Some audio setups are more complicated than mine. It, mine's not even that complicated, but I mean, if it reset your setup, I mean, it could take you a while to fix it all back up. And what if you've customized it for somebody for recording or something like th this? This has to be a bug. And so I've talked about how scuffed Kubuntu is and why I bounced to Ubuntu Studio. I've, I've told you about how great Ubuntu Studio is. Now, Studio is meant for content creation and, and like make doing stuff with media, basically. So how does a distro like that work for non-content creation? So I do some coding, I do some gaming. Does it work out? And of course it's going to work fine. It's based on Ubuntu. You could take Ubuntu Studio and turn it into a gaming machine distro if you really wanted to. Now, an interesting thing is that Ubuntu Studio has its own meta packages. So you could technically install all of the, the custom tools and tweaks from Ubuntu Studio on your own Ubuntu and install if you're running like XUbuntu or something like that. But it actually doesn't use a lot from the Kubuntu meta packages. Ubuntu Studio and Kubuntu use the same KDE packages. So it's actually a little bit odd that I don't see really any of the issues I was having on Kubuntu here on Studio, but whatever. It's Ubuntu Studio 23.10, by the way. I'm not crazy enough to run 24.4 beta on my production machine, huh? It's KDE Plasma version 5.27.8 with a low latency kernel version 6.5. That's right, Ubuntu Studio runs a low latency kernel because it's needed for some hi-fi audio setups. I tried a low latency kernel a while ago when I was on Debian and it did not work. It caused a lot of trouble. I tried one even longer ago when I was on Arch or it was probably Manjaro and I had the same problems. It just caused tons of lockups and it was a mess. Ubuntu Studio comes with a handy tool for helping you set up your audio. So if you have one of those funky audio setups, there's a tool that can kind of help. It mostly sets up Jack and Jack can be kind of a pain to set up. So it's really cool to have something like this. You know, there's probably like three different mainstream Linux audio systems. There's Pipewire, there's Pulse Audio, and there's Jack. So having a tool like that can help set it up for you. There are other distros that have similar tools, but here's the thing. Hi-Fi audio and media production is something special. A developer can't just write a script that changes a bunch of parameters in your Pulse Audio setup or something without knowing what they're doing. A lot of times those fine tunes are custom to your setup, so just like a script wouldn't really work anyway. So for something like a one-size-fits-all setup, I would trust a maintainer of a distro that's purpose-built for this sort of thing over just like a random script and some random one-off boutique distro, you know what I'm saying? Now some people say that Ubuntu Studio is bloated, and I'll say that it does come pre-installed with tons and tons of tools and utilities, and it does feel a bit bloated. But I mean on modern hardware, it doesn't really feel like anything, it just feels like a computer, so like what is bloat? As a software developer, I could do all of my work in a single program called VS Code. And I get a web browser, so two. When I'm producing a video, I need three tools at least. Four if you include content capture, like OBS. So even if there's 20 tools installed, I still need four of them. And now I'm over here like, well, what else is pre-installed here? We have audio production, video production, graphic design, really? See? This is the distro for me. But that's gonna wrap it up here. I wanna give a big, huge shout out to Stencil and the Hobby Shop Discord for sharing their adventures in their own distro hopping. And another big giant shout out for our new supporters, Sushi and Robin. And if you'd like to help out and support the channel and give me ideas for cool stuff to do, you can join and become a member. Or you can hop on over to the Hobby Shop Discord and join and become a member over there too. But yeah. 
and I appreciate all your support, and thanks for watching.